it's John and Mike, BrewDashUs.com. It's the second installment of the sixth pick from the Jar of Destiny. You got all those numbers right? I didn't. But uh, this is uh, sort of the second uh, choice of, uh, from our Jar of Destiny series in 2023. Uh, last week we had my beer, and this week we have Mike's, which is a what style beer? Well, the Pick the uh, nickel that I pickle. The nickel that I pulled out is um, <laughs> Brett Beer, 28A. Okay. Okay, and so what I decided to do for this beer, and it's funny, some people actually made the suggestion. Um, I, I think at the time I'd been thinking of some certain beers, so what I wanted to start with, the base beer here, which is what you're drinking, is the non bretted version of a Belgian double. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you this recipe. So I did a full six gallon batch so I could then split them, ferment them, and do um, the Brett in one of the beers. So That's this is nice. 11 pounds of Belgian Pilsner, 12 ounces of aromatic malt, eight ounces of biscuit, eight ounces of Caravienne, and just one and a half ounces of Carafa Special 3, just for color. It's also got a full pound of D90 uh, syrup, the dark stuff. Yep. It also has a pound of um, table sugar in it. Classic Belgian. Yeah. Um, this beer started off at 10.63 and finished at 10.004. So it is dry. Yeah. It is successfully very dry, which is what you want in a good Belgian beer um, in general. So um, I think it's come out with a pretty nice copper, yep. ambery color as it clears up a little bit more. It might be more ambery than copper, uh, dark copper. But I'm really happy how the base beer came out. And then, um, and then. I, uh, and I fermented this with Belgian Abbey um, Y yeast 1762. Um, and so after the first three days of fermentation were kicked off, then to this beer I added in uh, Britannomyces bruxellensis. So which is supposed to be the more leathery, horse blankety one, blah, blah, blah. So um, about a few days into fermentation, this guy got the Brett. And it sat there for just about a month and a half with the bread and the full fermentation. Yeah. It is uh, yeah. quite the difference <laughs> yeah. in the two beers, right? Yep. Yep. So the total ABV on this beer is about 7.75%. Mm. Um, um, yeah, so it probably could use a little more bread time, but what are you getting in the Brett beer. I wanted to be able to, for me, I just wanted to personally like really isolate the Brett flavor in the beer. Yeah. If I just brewed it as a Brett beer, you'd be like, yep, yeah, that's a, that's a that's Brett, Brett beer. Right? But I just wanted to really sort of get a better sense of what it really tasted like on my palate. Yeah. What it's uh, So I'll start with the double. Hmm. Needs a little more carbonation, I admit that. And that's, and that's, we're, we're powering through that. That's fine. <laughs> um, all of the uh, dark fruit flavors that are in the double are gone from the Brett beer. I mean, is that if that's my big takeaway from what Brett brought? And what's replaced is sort of that there's like it's not unpleasant. It's actually very nice. You know, the tinges of leather yeah. in the Brett beer. Yep. You know, it's not. I wouldn't say horse blanket. No, I don't even not, know what that is, really means. Bad, um, yep. but like it's. Uh, you know, if you if you have a <laughs> if you know you, you buy a, a belt, leather belt. Yep. You know, the first time you you're like, oh wow, there's like a strong smell from that. Yep. It's it's sort of that with <laughs> without the t yeah. you know, without it being too strong. I find it presents a little bit spicier per se than the straight Belgian Abbey yeast. Yeah. There's a little bit more phenolic quality to it. The finish is a lot cleaner on the bread beer. I I feel like I could drink more of the bread beer just because it's uh, a lot of the strong flavors yeah. from the uh, double are muted, hmm. and it's more drinkable to me. Yeah, I think it's almost sort of brought it together in yeah. a different way, right? Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we let this age a little bit more, how the two, if they start to stand apart even more. Hmm. Um, they both actually finished at 10.04. Okay. Um, so, like, this Brett carrot is, you know, maybe there'll be a little bit more creep of, you know, and even, it's, even though it's cold in the keg, it might be a little more creep, but I can't imagine this thing getting any lower in... in um, in, in uh, gravity. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think like all the the lush uh, fruit, like what I'm saying is dark, dried yeah. fruit flavors of the double are are uh, smoothed out. Smoothed out. That's and then it's sort of, 
in its wake you have kind of this more of a refined flavor in the Brett beer. I, I think it's it's much more drinkable. Again, I could like go and have a couple of these where the the double would be kind of a nice one off. Yeah, yeah. You know, probably pair it with some yeah. you know, rich food. Yeah. But this I could sit down and have a couple and, sure. and be happy with sure. it. Sure. Um I think what I'm gonna do is bottle these off in some glass bottles. Yeah. A uh, little with some priming sugar and that way I that way I can free up keg space. But then just have them in because it's only about two and a half gallons per keg. So um, just have like a half a case or I mean a case of like the twenty I'll probably do twenty ounce bottles. Um, and we'll just that way I can store them and see how they shape up and yeah. how they age a little bit. But I do think pushing through in a three month time frame for Jar of Destiny, um, I've got a sense of here is the bread beer and this is what bread tastes like in the absence of the bread yeah. as well. So really focusing in on the bread. Because usually when you experience bread in a lot of beers, it's also with like some some pediococcus. Yeah, and there's and there's, some there's funk, a lot right? going on usually. Yeah. Um, so I really wanted to try to um, stay true. Now, so some people were, were talking about wood and other bugs and stuff like that, but this category is Brett beer. It is fermenting not as a solo organism, but in, as a companion organism. So you're not making a sour beer. You're not make, you're just giving it that. Um, the, the larger category is American wild ales. So yeah. it's just making a beer that's got that, we call that bread character wild, you know? So yeah. um, wild and it's, you know, cause it's not the traditional clean, if you will, or, or phenol negative brewer's yeast we're used to. Um, so that's sort of um, what this is. What do you think the judging guidelines would be if you were to submit just, to say beer number two? Mm -hmm. um, what what does what are the guidelines say to the judges to look for in that beer? In Belgian, so this is Belgian double. Yep. And it'd be judged as such, right? Okay. Be, yeah. And so you, with with, a Brett, with in, Brett character. Well, with Brett character, you can put in the Brett beer category you can ha you have to just declare what the base style is yeah okay. so in this case it'd be belgian double so they're going to look for belgian double characters yes. right but then with does the, the brett, how does the brett play with I that see. so that's in this category what you're really being scored on you could do anything you wanted if you you know if you want to do some sort of i've got all these blackberries growing in my yard and a spruce tree so i'm going to do a blackberry spruce beer with brett that's fine as long as the brett plays really you can make the very best spruce blackberry beer but if the brett clashes with it your brett choice is poor or, yeah right so they're looking for how well does the brett play on whatever your base style was got it right because um, anybody could just make a golden ale and throw bread in there yeah right some uh california ale yeast and throw bread in there but what is that beer really right so you know it's, it might, maybe it tastes great i don't know but they're looking for how well you can marry the character of brett with some other base style got it well, I think you've you've <laughs> you've done that. Yeah, based yeah. on what you said about how it smooths it all out, I yeah. think you're right. I think it, it plays exactly. really well. Yeah. Um, I guess I, this explains why Orval bottles with Brett. Yeah. Smooths the beer out, gives yeah. it its, its unique. Character. I find that beer to be very drinkable. It is very yeah. drinkable. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So. All right. Well, that concludes the uh, second pick or the sixth pick overall of the Jar of Destiny. Stay tuned. We do another pick next time. But uh, this is uh, how Brett. Uh, beer uh, is uh, categorized and also what does Brett bring to the party of a classic beer style and uh, we see that it does work with uh, Belgian double quite nicely so cheers to that all right so if you like this uh, video give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel because we uh, definitely do this kind of thing every single week for John and Mike brew-dudes.com brew on cheers, cheers.